another incident of mine that is instructive of my tours of duty is the one time we had a man named Jack Duckett who was a brilliant cryptographic equipment operator, code expert from the Carolinas. And he at our communication center in Pleiku in the Central Highlands had joined the Viet Cong attack on his base, picked up his automatic weapon and, and turned it towards his headquarters and opened fire. He was knocked down by a rifle butt of another American soldier. He was bound and helicoptered out to Quinyan where he was first taken to, to uh, the hospital, the 60, 67th Evacuation Hospital, and after three days of sedation was released to Company B, 41st Signal Battalion where I took charge of him as the resident psychiatrist and guru to evaluate him whether or not he was fit to perform duties again after that because people did go crazy in war it happens and at the same time the National Security Agency was evaluating his fitness to maintain a security clearance for cryptographic materials access. And after being there about a week, the answer came back from the Strategic Communications Command that he was not to have communications pass again. He could not get into the communication center anywhere. He lost all cryptographic access, period. So he'd have to be assigned other duties. I was the one who had to give him that word. And he was putting sandbags on top of a bunker, building up defenses on a bunker that we were erecting there on the compound. And as I told him, standing below him, that the bad news, his response was, I'm going to get my weapons and I'm going to kill them all in the communication center. Headquarters, not the communication center itself, but the headquarters of Company B. And he he ran off the other side of the bunker. Well, I I was on one side of the bunker; he was on the other side, and we had a series of built-up tunnels, so to speak, to run down because a lot of times our ground was underwater. You couldn't dig down; you had to build up with sandbags for fortification purposes. So that's what it was. He leaped off the other side and I heard him screaming as he ran towards his bunker where he kept his gear. And I ran to the communication center's Company B headquarters and ran in one side of the dog-legged entrance and screamed, Duckett's getting his weapons to kill you all. The company commander, who was a great soldier, was a captain, West Point, great soldier. I won't give his name. He uh, ordered me, get him, uh, meaning for me to eliminate the threat from Duckett. I ran to the, because it was easy, because I could hear the Doppler effect of his screams. It was easy to tell which rat ways he was running down and I headed him off before he could get into the other entrance of the communication center headquarters, Company B. And I stepped away from the bunkered wall as he got into sight and screamed at him to freeze, which he did. I had leveled 45 at him. And then I tried to talk him down because I wasn't just going to kill him. And he screamed that he was going to kill them all in the 
Company B headquarters. And I, I said, Jack, you do not have to. And as a show of stupidity on my part, I put down my 45 in the sand and proceeded to try and talk him down. But he, it was that was a mistake. He uh, didn't want to be talked down. He wanted to kill everybody at Company B headquarters. He was fixated on him for some reason. They had nothing to do with whether or not he had security clearance. But they were part of the chain of command, and that was good enough for him. That's what he fixated on, and those were the people he was going to kill. And I was blocking him, which was not a smart idea for me to do. But I did it. And rather than shooting him down like a dog, which I had the drop on him, I put my weapon down in the sand and started easing closer toward him and closer toward him. He saw the maneuver. He was a very brilliant kid. And he said he was going to kill them all, and he was lowered his automatic weapon towards me. And center body mass. That was not a good sign. I knew that right away. But I had an inspirational thought. I said, Jack, your mother's going to be told that you killed American soldiers. Your mother will know. And he screamed predictably at me, you leave my mother out of it. Screaming at the top of this went to another level of mania. And I knew I had a good line, and I continued to repeat it. Jack, your mother will find out you killed American soldiers. <clears throat> She'll be mental, emotionally, mentally destroyed for life. And she raised a son and killed American soldiers. Stop talking about my mother, he was screaming. But meantime, as that was happening, I was getting close to him, almost enough to take him down with a leap. But not quite. I was in deep trouble and I knew it. At that point, another American soldier appeared on the bunker behind him, on the roof of the bunker. And he had a weapon in his hands, but I yelled out, don't shoot him, looking up at the top of the bunker that he was next to. Duckett instinctively turned his weapon towards the top of the bunker, and as he did, I closed the difference, tackled him, took him down, and rendered him harmless. The other soldier came down and assisted me as we cut off part of the uniform of his pants to make it into, into cloth strips that we could bind him hand and foot because he was completely berserk. And we dragged him to a nearby Jeep, put him in the back seat of the Jeep with me next to him, and we drove him to 67th Evacuation Hospital. Well, I had secured his weapon, his automatic rifle, and I checked the chamber and he had a bullet in it and he had the safety off and he had it on full automatic. That started to irritate me slightly because I was trying to save his life and he was trying to kill me obviously and that just didn't square up with me emotionally very well. So we get to this 67th Evac Hospital and we're in a little bit of retaliation. We're dragging him with his face first across the sand, which is all beach sand where we lived. We're dragging him towards the door of this, this uh, headquarters. And, and uh, one of the surgeons looked out of the door, which is a screen door, and saw this and heard the screaming of Duckett and screamed out, untie that man who was totally bound at that point. I reached down with my bayonet and cut, the, cut with my bayonet the cloth that was holding his 
bound ankles together with his bound wrists. And a nurse from 67th Mac Hospital immediately came over and knelt by him on the, on the slab that they were on inside this Quonset hut, which was their exam consult room. And as she bent down to check on him, he used both of his hands together, hit her in the jaw, and knocked her out. Whereupon the presiding surgeon, 67th of the Vac, screamed, Tie that son of a bitch up. So he did. The doctor came over with a needle of some kind of, of, a, of relaxant, gave, it, gave him a shot in his shoulder, and he went to sleep within a few seconds. That was another one of my good moves in Vietnam.